So a warm welcome once again from me, Roger Mills, on behalf of Churches Together in Cornwall, as we gather for day seven of the week of prayer for Christian Unity 2022. Although we call it a week of prayer, it is actually an octave of prayer. It's eight days. Uh, so our final reflection will actually be tomorrow, and that's with Sarah Yardley from Creation Fest. So don't miss that, but if by any chance you do, all is not lost, because as with all the reflections, as well as our special service of prayer for the environment that went out yesterday, uh, they'll all remain available on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our webpage at ctcinfohub.org, WPCU22. So today our speaker is the Reverend Ruth Whitehead, moderator of the Southwestern Synod of the United Reformed Church. Ruth's responsibilities uh, cover a very wide area from Cornwall right up to Swindon. So as well as being a trustee of Churches Together in Cornwall, uh, she's also a member of several other Churches Together groups across her area. And today we're actually sharing her with Churches Together in Somerset. So to make this possible, we're adopting a slightly different format for one day only. Uh, Ruth has recorded a five minute reflection for us. And uh, I and my wife, Sue, um, will run through the other materials from the booklet. Uh, and as the theme for today is the search for unity, we'll spend a little time looking at what that means in terms of churches working together in Cornwall. Um, so we'll um, go over now to Ruth's reflection. Today's Bible verse. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. My name is Ruth Whitehead and I'm the moderator of the Southwestern Synod of the United Reformed Church. It's good to be leading our thoughts today. I love any Bible reading which starts with the word then, because it immediately makes you pick up your Bible to find out after what something has happened, then this happens. They open their treasure chests. Well, the thing that's just happened is that the Magi, the wise ones, have found the infant Jesus and Mary, his mother, and have knelt down in homage. They have worshipped. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offer their gifts. Perhaps like me, you're used to singing hymns about the gifts of the Magi, which talk about their offering of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and then say something like, but we haven't got those precious gifts, so we offer our worship. I'm happy to sing those hymns, but this word then in our Bible verse suggests that the gifts are something offered as well as the worship. Of course, we're called, like the Magi, to worship God made flesh in Jesus. But I think then we're called to offer more, more even than our worship. Listen to what the prophet Hosea says at the start of chapter 6 of the book of Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. Hosea also gives God's reply. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love, and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. Hosea tells us the gift God requires of us 
is love. But this isn't just a wishy-washy desire to love God, but real, tangible gifts of steadfast love and living in knowledge of God. As Christians seeking to grow together in this week of prayer for Christian unity, we know that our love of God is expressed in our unity, our reconciliation, our love of one another. What gifts can we bring to enable us as the whole body of Christ to offer the world an example of much needed love and reconciliation? There's a strand of Christians working together which is known as receptive ecumenism. It asks us to wonder what our tradition needs to learn from other traditions. What gifts we can receive from each other, as well as what gifts we offer one another. And how we can receive from God through those gifts shared in the whole church. This week of prayer for Christian unity, I pray we will learn to offer our gifts, receive from one another, and so learn more and more about the love of God shown in the gifts of the whole church of God. The Christians of the Middle East have written this prayer for us today. All praise, glory and thanksgiving to you, O God. As we join the wise men coming from afar, we pray that you open our hearts to your love and to the love of our brothers and sisters around us. Give us the will and the means to work towards the transformation of this world and to offer each other gifts that may nurture our communion. Grant us your endless gifts and blessings. Receive our prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, apologies for that extra bit if you heard it. <laughs> um, so thank you, Ruth. Um, so what are those treasures that uh, um, we can receive from each other? Well, Sue is now going to read our second reading set for today um, from um, Matthew and from the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus is pretty clear on what their nature should be. Matthew, uh, reading from chapter 6, verses 19 to 21, I'm reading from the New International Version. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where are our hearts when it comes to being the church of God? The week of prayer for Christian unity has traditionally uh, been a time when we can reflect together on that across our various denominations. It has a long history, originating over a century ago. And sometimes perhaps it's a bit tempting to think it's had its day. If it was going to work, surely it would have worked by now. And indeed, the Churches Together movement only exists precisely because we're not together. We're as divided as we ever were. Or are we? Back when we were celebrating the Queen's 90th birthday, uh, our church had a little exhibition. It included a complete bound set of our parish magazine. I happened to pick up the volume for 1952, the year of the Queen's accession. And it happened to fall open at the entry for the week of prayer for Christian unity. The vicar, bless him, had written, this is the week 
when the more reputable of the non-conformist churches return to the mother church to pray for reunification. This stuck with me, partly as a near perfect example of how to offend the maximum number of people with the minimum number of words, but also as a reminder, sometimes necessary, that things really have changed in 70 years. We're not praying this week uh, for everybody to become an Anglican, though speaking as an Anglican, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Um, but uh, our Roman Catholic friends might perhaps um, consider that the uh, Mother Church isn't the Anglican Church, quite reasonably. Um, but of course, our vicar in 1952 wasn't intending to offend anybody. He was expressing what was no doubt uh, then a common and genuine sense of sadness at the estrangement of the various branches of the Christian family. And I hope that one day, prodigal son style, they will all return to the starting point, whatever that might be, and we could kill the fatted calf and get on with what God wants us to do. And where we've made progress, perhaps, is in becoming a bit clearer on what that is. Taking a bit more notice of what Hosea and Jesus were trying to tell us rather a long time ago. So although we still call it the week of prayer for Christian unity, today the emphasis I think is much more on praying in unity, accepting that there are many different ways to pray and many different ways to worship, but there's only one God. And that in all our different denominations, there are many treasures that we can offer to each other, which will enrich our hearts. And it's those hearts that we offer to God. Ruth mentioned that there's now something called receptive ecumenism. Um, it's not something I'd heard of before last year, I have to admit, and maybe it is or isn't familiar to you, but it's uh, a way of uh, exploring this process of listening to each other across the denominations and learning how to discover each other's gifts. It's currently something that's studied in schools of theology with scholarly conferences and PhDs being written about it, um, but it belongs in the churches at ground level with you and me, if it's going to make any difference and help us to work together better. So in Churches Together in Cornwall, we're thinking about how we might explore receptive ecumenism locally. And to start the ball running, we're planning a webinar on Wednesday, the 16th of February at 2.30 p.m. with a speaker, Doral Hayes, who is herself writing a PhD about it, um, but is also the County Ecumenical Officer for Hertfordshire, so she knows where we're at. Uh, and she's going to try and explain the concepts in layman's language and start some discussion on where we might go with it. And we're very grateful to Cathy Pope, uh, who led our affections here on Friday for setting this up. Uh, more details will be out next week, uh, but meanwhile, do pop the date in your diaries, uh, 16th of February, and as ever, it will be recorded so you can catch up later, if need be. So the churches of the Middle East have suggested we take a moment to focus on the words of a verse from the hymn brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Um, and uh, it's a good reminder of how not to get too full of ourselves um, and to rest in the strength of the Lord. So Sue's going to read that now. Vainly we offer each ample oblation, vainly with gifts would his favour secure. Richer by far, is the heart's adoration. Dearer to God are the prayers of the poor. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us your aid. Star of the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer is laid. So as we come to the questions uh, that are before us today, 
Um, we need to bear in mind that we're very keen on trying to fix things, but we can only do it with God's strength. And we can only do it to his and not to ours or the church's glory. So climate justice, uh, the first global question, um, perhaps the biggest issue facing us internationally, which of course was spotlighted for us in Cornwall last year with the G7 and then nationally with the COP26. And the problems are enormous and they require a lot of prayer as well as practical action. And that's why we chose to focus on the environment for our longer service for the week of prayer uh, yesterday. So if you haven't watched it yet, do, do um, uh, try and find time to do so. It lasts 45 minutes um, and it's uh, full of good things and suggestions about what actions um, you might be able to take yourself. Um, and our website is full of uh, other information to help. For example, the page here on environment and creation care with all sorts of coming events and other things that uh, will help you to keep up to date and give you ideas. Um, or you might like to join the Cornwall Church's Environment Group, which is an informal ecumenical group which meets monthly uh, to pray uh, together and to share news, discuss issues and generally encourage each other. And it's that group that actually prepared our service that uh, we had yesterday. Uh, it's an independent group, but it works in association with Churches Together in Cornwall as one of a growing number of what we're calling uh, liaison groups. And again, you'll find a page on our website um, telling you about them. So you see we've got, as well as the one for creation care, we've got groups going at the moment on chaplaincy, mental health, bereavement and modern slavery, uh, and others in formation. And if you want to find out more, there are contact um, names there you can get in touch with. So we place a lot of emphasis on social action and the local question um, suggests that Christian unity is often better advanced when we put our heads together on a specific project. Uh, and one project uh, that um, we've been working on in the past year uh, in Churches Together in Cornwall is uh, Modern Slavery. Um, and we've created the Modern Slavery in Cornwall Network, which is another informal group of um, concerned Christians that grew out of an ecumenical training course that was run last year with a whole load of partners. Um, and you may think that modern slavery isn't something that, that happens in Cornwall, but of course, sadly, it does. Um, and uh, the aim of the group really is to raise awareness amongst um, church people that this does go on. Um, there are signs that you can look out for. There are people you can report things to if you're anxious about something. And we just want to encourage people to open their eyes a bit. Um, not to do anything yourself because there are um, agencies that will do that safely uh, and um, they just need to be told. Um, so it's a question of, of um, reporting really. Um, but um, in order to raise awareness, we've, we've produced a couple of posters, we've produced a contact card with um, uh, the phone numbers of um, organizations you can ring if you want to get something investigated. Um, and uh, this year, the um, branch of the Church of England, the, the, the Cure Clua in the Church of England, who um, are the sort of arm that looks at uh, modern slavery issues, uh, are producing some new courses focusing on county lines, the um, uh, drug racket uh, that many young people sadly are getting drawn into. Um, and it's something that also affects us here in Cornwall and affects us perhaps more immediately if you're thinking of your children or grandchildren and the dangers that may face them. Um, so Clue have produced uh, uh, some new training courses, which some members of the network are going to do. But they've also produced a, an awareness raising hour long video aimed at uh, parents and grandparents. Um, so again, that's something that you might like to look out for that will be coming soon. <laughs> Um, and we may be running a Lent course, we're thinking about this at the moment, uh, on county lines topic. Uh, it'll be online, it'll be ecumenical, anybody can join in. 
Um, and again, it's to raise awareness and to think about why this matters to us as Christians, as just ordinary members of society, but also as Christians and what we can do. So these are the kind of things that uh, in terms of social justice, uh, we can get involved with. Uh, the personal question here um, asks us to think about uh, the balance between worship and social justice in our churches. And it's important, I think, to bear in mind all the time that one doesn't work without the other, and they are interdependent and indeed essential to each other. And that's what unity, what unity is all about. So um, uh, if sometimes um, we tend to place too much focus on worship um, or too much focus on what we're doing in the community and forgetting about our worship, um, we need to bring them both together and hold them both together. Uh, in our prayers all the time. Um, and then for the go and do uh, today, um, again, uh, suggesting that we do some campaigning. Um, you may or may not uh, feel you're a natural campaigner, um, but there's all sorts of things you can do uh, as well as going out and waving banners and uh, joining uh, marches. Um, to just voice the fact that this is something that you as a Christian, that we as Christians think matters. Uh, and it suggests we try and identify uh, projects in our local areas that need more support. Um, and I do commend our website and our um, info hub uh, to you. Uh, they, uh, we endeavor to gather together as much information as we can uh, on our website uh, about all these topics um, and uh, you'll find loads and loads of information there and if you want to tell us about something that we can publicize to others then please do we always in need of information um, and if you want to you can sign up for our weekly news bulletin because people tend not to go and look at websites every day um, but sometimes it's handy to have a uh, a weekly email to remind you about things. And you can sign up for that on our website um, and you can get this bulletin if you haven't seen it before, it comes out every week and it's packed full of information about what's going on. Um, there's always uh, some prayers and all sorts of news items and other stories. So that's available um, if you want to. Uh, get well informed about what's going on in Cornwall, and there is an awful lot. Um, it's really, actually, when all this lands on my desk, it's really hugely encouraging to know just how much the Christian community in Cornwall is getting up to. So now, as we draw our reflections to a close, um, let's join together and say the prayer that's uh, in the booklet. God, through your prophets that have called us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. In Christ, you have shown us what that looks like. Through your Holy Spirit, you continually enable us to hear your words, to follow Christ's example, and to live as his disciples. So as we gather at the manger, heal our wounds, Reconcile our divisions and hold us together in your love. So thank you for joining us and let's go out and share the treasure in our hearts. See you tomorrow. Bye everyone. <clears throat> Good to see you.